Well, it's finally time. Holidays are over. Been a busy holiday season. There's a birthday in there in the family, and between that and just other odds and ends, haven't gotten out here to work on this until now. But I start stripping sheet metal off. Um, of course, these things always happen when the fuel tank's full. I got the upper fuel tanks. So I have to drain that, which kind of works out good. I got the uh, fuel or pump I added on to an electric fuel pump, so I'll use that to drain the fuel down. Make that a little easier. Get stuff stripped off and start figuring out what what went wrong. But first, I've got a couple of Christmas presents to hang up. My brother and my nieces, not the ones in the video, different uh, nieces. Uh, they got me a couple of Oliver signs for Christmas, so gotta get them babies hung up. And then digging up front. Oh, I found a couple old re, well, they're repop signs that my dad had uh, bought over the years and just sitting in a pile up there. I figured might as well hang them up. We'll get that done, start getting to work. Couple things I wanted to point out. Um, I put an overflow tank on it years ago. Um, just got something at the local auto parts store, Universal One, found a place where I could mount it. And uh, makes it a lot easier keeping an eye on the uh, coolant when you can just uh, look through the front grill and uh, see that there's coolant in the jug. Plus, uh, you don't have uh, air space up there and air has oxygen which promotes corrosion so it's better to keep it all sealed up so it just uh pretty cheap uh, add-on then uh, the other thing here it's not original this fuel cooler it's actually from a white 185 um dean barker 
who's not with us anymore, but he was an engineer for Oliver and White. And uh, he said one of the guys on the line told him about doing this and just to push the fuel through better. Had an electric fuel pump over here. That's a long ways to lift it. And the only fuel pump originally on these is the one built into the Rusa Master injection pump down here. And boy, I just really livened this tractor up. Who knows, maybe that's my problem. But uh, <laughs> it, um, definitely uh, more horsepower. And then the biggest difference I notice is used to be when I get the top tank would get empty, which is the green part of your fuel gauge on this particular age of tractor. You get down here and then it's trying to lift the fuel up. Just uh, makes it work or you lose some horsepower out of it because it's drawing the fuel instead of pushing or the gravity ain't pushing it anymore. And getting that fuel pump on there just made a world of difference on that. Later in the day, hours when you're down on the lower tank and uh, just seems like it's dogging a little bit on you. Spun out the uh, manifold preheater, like uh, one or two people suggested, and I think we might have a winner. The uh, porcelain in there is broken. One half, it looks like it's one half has got a clean break, and the other side's a little dirty. There's a chip off from it right there, and I'm not sure what the Rest of it's supposed to, how much porcelain's supposed to be in there. I guess never really had to mess with one before. But it ain't looking good. Not looking good at all. Other than maybe the porcelain didn't do a lot of damage since it's uh, hopefully softer. I would have thought it would just crushed. But I guess I'll know better when I get the heads off. Well, I went digging in the basement, my part stash, and I had a brand new uh, manifold preheater. That's how the uh, porcelain's supposed to be. All one piece, not split in half. A couple of chunks missing out, like this one is. So, I guess uh, I can stick that in and it should be all fixed, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I've got everything uh, pretty much ready. I got the motor mount bolts, everything disconnected that needs to be disconnected. Uh, short of this coupler back here. And there's this plug right here. I've already loosened it up and take that out. White had a special tool. I just use a punch. What you gotta do is uh, there's an outer coupler. That's your transmission drive that drives from the over and under into the main transmission. There's a hole in that. And then you gotta line that up. So you gotta turn the engine over. And then inside is the uh, power shaft. And that's what you really need to hold because it floats between uh, there and the engine. And so if you don't have that pin in there to keep the shaft forward with the engine, it'll want to slide out and it just, then it binds and then you get angry, say choice words. And uh, so I, I will show after I got it out because it just, uh, it's a lot easier to show what's going on and visualize it with the, with the engine out and what I do to do it. But one thing I have learned to do, and of course this don't help you if you didn't have the motor in last, is um is i've uh, when i put the inner coupler on i make sure that the uh, timing mark is lined up with the pin here and then finding the outer coupler is uh well that can change depending on whether you're an over or under clutch spinning all that good stuff but as a bigger hole it's on the outside it's easier to find the inner one can be a bear and uh so once i find the outer one i just crank the engine backwards and that way the uh, overrunning clutch and the underdrive just lets it freewheel um, it may be a possibility if things are dragging or whatever that you uh, have to tie the clutch pedal down leave your clutch pedal hooked up tie it down or have someone else hold it and then you want to leave your motor mount bolts in because it's going to want to draw the motor backwards and uh and then turn your engine but generally uh turning it backwards seems to work all right but then uh, if uh, it's splined in, and I'll show that when things are apart, but when it's splined in, you get this timed up and, uh, and then that hole is always there when you, when you line it up with that. And there's no uh, turning and turning hunting for that inner hole. You just come around, turn it till it's that point and it should be there. Um, my hoist, it's actually just a beam from an Oliver plow, or not the hoist, but the uh, spreader bar, I guess, that I use. We got it figured out some time ago, which holes to use to spread it out. We use these chains uh, on the 32.8s. And I gotta move the clevis if it's, uh, if I'm doing that, but that's, I uh, do remember, right? That's in the right spot for a Hercules, where it balances out pretty good and hook on the front. But anyways, it works pretty slick and there's plenty of steel in it. Well, it is out. Give you an idea here. That's another thing. It was my speedometer speed sensor right down here. It's bad, which that can be reached from underneath, but a lot easier up here. Um, there's where the drive, the center shaft drives hydraulics, PTO, and the outer shaft drives the transmission. But I'll go over here to the back of the over and under and show you what I was doing. Let's see, where's my punch okay we got this coupler and the outer one ain't too big of a deal because that just floats in there it's a big heavy bugger it is directional um, but what's bad is this inner shaft can slide back. This one doesn't want to at the moment. But, um, or this coupler can slide off the shaft and it's got holes in it. It's got one on each end. You only use one end, but that's uh, that way it doesn't matter which direction you put it in. You don't mess it up. 
And so what I was doing is uh, the outer is out of there, but so I'm coming through with my uh, punch. They made a special tool that actually threaded in here. This is pipe thread, half inch pipe thread. Then it had a bolt through the center of that that you could thread down in and hold into that. And uh, it seemed like we bent a lot of them tools, would make new ones. I found just using a punch that I can pry against it this way and hold that collar, this uh, spline collar towards the engine. So that gives me the little bit extra room I need to get it to disengage from the rear. But you start lifting too much and everything gets a bind on it and it just don't want to let go. Yeah. Cuss words fly, all that good stuff. So that's what I do. I think it works better than the original tool. Simpler. I guess I should measure that hole to let you know what size the thing needs to be, but you're shooting from the front hole. And because this can float, you want to kind of, you know, search back and forth with your tool because it can move just a little bit in there. But by uh, doing like I was saying, lining up the timing mark on the harmonic balancer with the pointer there, um, and then putting your uh, drive coupler in so that it lines up with your hole. Then if you ever have to take it apart again, you know this inner shaft always turns the same speed as the crankshaft. So if it's lined up, it's gonna stay lined up. You know the, that that's gonna be where you want. The outer one's gonna move no matter what because you push down on a clutch, it stops turning, this keeps turning. So they're never gonna be synchronized, but the outer one's real easy to find. It's a bigger hole, a whole lot bigger. But just not. Yeah, I started draining the engine oil and I heard things go tink, tink, tink into the oil pan. I would say the magnet picked that up from the cross hatches on it. I would say that's a piece of sleeve. My guess now is, is that uh, whether it's related to that ceramic or not, I suppose it's possible, but I'd say a sleeve broke at the top and uh, dropped down and then the rod hit it and shattered the lower part of the sleeve and uh, but yeah it's about the right thickness i can see cross hatch on it i think that's a piece of sleeve this um that's not good i don't know if that could have uh, made this happen but it looks like the sleeve uh, broke and fell down and just got annihilated i would say the piston's still in there i can't believe the blow by didn't suddenly increase but then again i wasn't really working it that hard just driving down the driveway let's see which number was it? Looks like it was number six. Because it does not have, I think. I can see the sleeve for number five but I cannot see a sleeve for number six. The oil cooling jet got broken off when it, oh yeah. Yep, it was number six. Well, I thought it sounded like it was coming from five. I wasn't too far off. Ah, oh, crud. Well, we know what happened. Be interesting to see how much damage there is on the top end. But the wife says the dinner's almost ready, so I guess that'll just wait till tomorrow.
but yeah i would say the sleeve it has a lip on the top i would say it cracked and split and broke off and so the rest of the sleeve was able to slide down and as the rod came around it just hammered the stuff and busted it and now the noise we're hearing is uh is just uh there's the oil oil jet for under the piston that doesn't look none too hot bolts probably sheared off in the block on that and then the next thing is is if one of them did it how far away from it are the rest of them yeah some piston rings maybe there's a oil ring uh. well it's been a couple days since i worked on it ended up shipping out some corn i uh, want to do a shout out to lyle and jamie and blake over at mcmanus trucking uh, had a 15,000 bushel contract to get delivered for the month of January and they got in here and got her taken care of in just a couple days Yeah, always been great service out of them. So thank you guys Sir driveways out here and uh, when I got around to head back to the field gave her some more throttle That probably uh, bumped the boost up and of course the engine sucking in more that piece went in and at this point, I'm guessing it kind of wedged between the piston and the, uh, and the liner, which cracked the liner and made it split and dropped down and then it busted into a bajillion pieces and ended up in the oil pan. Okay, I think everything's detached. Where? Pull this head up. Looks like underneath there. Go around one more time just to make sure.
Let's just get you in there. Ooh. Look at the destruction. There was definitely something on top of the piston. I can still see rings down in there though. And the top of the sleeve is still in place, which might work out in my favor. Man, look at all the pieces that are just hammered into the top of that piston. But it still wiggles. That's worth something, ain't it? But yeah, I would say, looking at that and that, oh, where's my paper towel? Yeah. Top of the sleeve is in there. So hopefully that means the sleeve land at least didn't get ruined. Oogly. It's oogly. Now let's look under the head. Get a light. A little piece of something there and embedded in the head there. A few nicks. That's just the injector tip there. Overall, not as bad as I thought it would be after seeing the top of that piston. The rest of them look nice. good still I'd say the rest of them still have a lot of life in them a um, little background on it has 4,500 total hours on it but somewhere I don't know around 2,000 hours we um, I'll just say we had some vandalism in the area and put it at that um, somehow or another this tractor and things that were left outdoors were getting water in them flat tires stuff like that and um, the injectors went bad in this we got them uh, took them out took them to the local uh, injector shop and had them go on through and they said congratulations you win the prize for the worst injectors ever brought in i think some of them were able to be rebuilt some had to be replaced and uh God, it was less than 2,000 hours, but by 2,500 hours, it wasn't running right, wasn't making power, the exhaust manifold had cracked. So I figured I'd pull the head off, see what was going on, at least do a valve job on it. And uh, four of the six cylinders you could see had broken rings, there were scratches up and down the sleeves. And I pretty much blame it on those bad injectors that washed uh, the oil out. And of course that traces back to the, the vandalism. So at 2,500 hours, it was right on the money. I put new pistons and sleeves in it, but the bottom end looked really good. So um, I left that alone. And uh, so these pistons and sleeves only have 2,000 hours on them. And uh, I guess at least uh, one of them, uh, since they all look good other than the one that failed, I'm probably gonna just go with replacing the one hole. I'm gonna chalk this up to that uh, porcelain breaking in the manifold preheater. It can't be a coincidence. It's got fresh brakes in it, and all of a sudden things go uh, bad. Okay, I got the engine tipped on its side. Got the rod cap off. The bottom side of the bearing looks really good. Of course, that's not the side that really does the work. Here's the top half, the side that does do the work. That looks really good. I'm thinking I might roll in new bearings as long as I'm this close. But still. 
for 4,500 hours, it looks pretty good. there and you can see the pieces come out as I push them out from the other side oh yeah now the top ring broke Good thing to make the pistons out of aluminum. Well, yeah, the top edge of that took a beating. I was able to pull the remainder of the sleeve out, which is just a ring now. Of course, it would hit that ring because once the rest of the uh, once the rest of the sleeve was uh, out, then the piston could slap around and not be uh, concentric to the bore. So it could hit this uh, hit this ring every time it came up and smack the top of the piston here. I'm sure that was making a lot of my noise and the pieces flying around. Rod looks good. They definitely put a lot of iron in these rods. The second compression ring looks like it survived all right. It's a little jammed in there. Top one had a chunk broke out. As I figured, the oil ring is pretty much gone because it was in the oil pan. I'm gonna wipe out this bore and see how the block looks. so good Couple of scratch marks, nothing very deep. Stuff that I think emery cloth would uh, buff up. I think it's gonna be all right. I think it's worth a try. <laughs> there was no water in the crankcase, so I don't think it cracked it. Essentially, it was a uh, piston was going up and down on that bore without a sleeve. For those of you that aren't familiar with, uh, or as familiar, or familiar at all with engines, there's three basic construction types. There's your parent bore engine, which is what a lot of automotive stuff is. They bore the block out for the piston. The piston actually goes up and down in the actual casting of the, the block. And if you rebuild the engine, you bore out the block and get a slightly larger piston to um, fit the larger hole. Then there's a block like this one where they bore it out and then there's a, what they call a liner, a dry sleeve. It slides in here and, uh, and then the piston goes up and down on that. It's captured by this little lip here and so it can't go up and down. The head has got it pinned down and it can't go up against the head or down because of this ledge. So the sleeve stays in there, piston goes up and down, does its job. The sleeve gets worn out, piston gets worn or whatever you're ready to overhaul. You just 
pop the old sleeve out, check everything out, put a new sleeve in and you're good to go. You don't have to bore the block or anything like that. And so they're very rebuildable. The downside to a dry sleeve engine is they can sometimes, the coolant is on the other side of the block here. And uh, so the heat has to transfer from the sleeve then to the block through this mud material here and then to the water inside the coolant inside the water jacket. So it can uh, have a little tougher time transferring heat than the other type, which is what a lot of the Oliver engines used was a wet sleeve. In that case, when the sleeve is out, this is all open in here and it's open to the water jacket where the coolant flows through. And when you put the sleeve in, it's got rubber O-rings on the bottom that mate to the bottom part of the block to seal the coolant from going into the oil pan. And then you have um, oh, the, the uh, fire ring, the gas, the head gasket at the top seals the top from uh, leaking the coolant out that way. So that one is good in the sense that uh, the sleeve is replaceable and the sleeve itself is actually touching the coolant so it transfers heat better. But you can get corrosion at the bottom of your sleeve and then that can let water or coolant down into the crankcase so they're a little more prone to leaking that way that the other two designs are not everyone's got its advantage the apparent bore where they just bore the block put the piston in it's cheaper there's fewer parts less machining um, that's why you see it more in automotive because chances are you're not gonna ever rebuild the engine and then in your bigger diesel engines you tend to find the either the wet sleeve or the dry sleeve and dry sleeve only uh, the sleeve itself is dry or it's gonna have oil in there and stuff, but it's it's touching the block. It's never touching the coolant. The heat has to transfer it to the block and then a wet sleeve. The sleeve itself actually touches the coolant. So that's where she stands right now. I think I'm gonna be able to rescue it. Got a little more work ahead of me to get some stuff around, but at least I know what I need to uh, to get and have done and where it stands and I think the other five, I was saying earlier, the sleeves really look good on them. Still lots of crosshatch, no ledge. Just, and it was running great. Only 2,000 hours on these pistons and sleeves. So I'm gonna just replace the one and uh, hope for the best. But, well, as I do more work on it, I'll give you a progress report. But that'll probably be it for this video. You now know what happened. Let's see what's, I still have to uh, oh, hopefully get the screw out of the bottom of the block here that held the oil jet on. That could be a hindrance. I'll get working on that. And uh, like I say from there, it's just a matter of uh, getting parts and getting those heads to the machine shop and having them clean them up and check them over and and she can start going back together i'll probably pull the clutch off just to double check but it does not have i'm trying to remember how many hours on it when i put that in but it's not a lot maybe a thousand probably not though but well i appreciate everybody watching stay tuned there'll be more future videos on this and uh Thanks again for watching.